If you were to ask, when did colonial India end? Most of you would say 1947, when the British Raj finally earned independence into the new partitioned nations of India and Pakistan. That answer is like 99% correct. Colonial India was basically over. But if we want to get technical about it, colonial India continued for another 14 years. Now how could that be possible? India and Pakistan both got independence in 1947, and the British were gone. That's the end of it, right? So how does colonial India continue? Well, 1947 ended British India, but British India was not the only colonial India. Many other nations also made an attempt to colonize parts of India, and while the British were by far the largest and most successful, there were three other colonial nations that outlasted them for a few more years. Naturally, India was eager to remove all colonial powers on the subcontinent, but each of the remaining colonial powers were dealt with differently. The French in India had varying success, as there was one point where during the Seven Years' War they threatened to take control of a lot of India from the British, but they failed. And by the 1900s, they only had a few coastal colonial cities and loges. A loge is basically like a single building, often a factory or trading post, with surrounding property that France had the right to fly its flag and host soldiers and stuff. Basically, imagine an embassy, but without the diplomats and with a trading post. In 1947, all of France's loges were ceded to India upon their independence, but their coastal colonial cities were of a different matter. France controlled the Indian cities of Chandernagor, Karaikal, Mahe, Pondicherry, and Yanam. The French and Indians negotiated to have elections determine the fate of each city, although not all of them went very smoothly. Chandernagor was first, and they voted to join India with 97% of the vote in 1948, and India was allowed to occupy the town in 1950, although the official paperwork was completed in 1952. However, Mahe and Yanam faced situations in which pro-Indian groups attempted to seize the cities for themselves. Mahe was successfully captured in 1954, ending French presence there, but the French were able to restore order in Yanam. But ultimately France decided to just cede Yanam, Pondicherry, and Karaikal to India by the end of 1954, with the official paperwork finally being finished in 1956. The French at home were very upset by this turn of events, and they stubbornly took their time ratifying their side of the treaty and waited all the way until 1962. But basically, French India ended in 1954, outlasting their British rivals by seven years. By the 1900s, Portuguese India was the second largest colonial presence in India behind the British, even more than France. While Portugal possessed the coastal towns of Diu and Daman, and also possessed the tiny inland territories named Dadra and Nagar Haveli, they also had a larger coastal possession called Goa, which included several small towns and cities and is roughly the size of South Georgia Island for comparison. Those same groups that tried to seize parts of French India in 1954 did the same with Dadra and Nagar Haveli the same year, and were successful. The rest of Portuguese India, however, was not able to be obtained peacefully or with those other groups, so India decided to take matters into their own hands. On December 17, 1961, India used its army to invade Goa, Diu, and Daman, and captured all three areas by the 19th only two days later. This move alienated several countries diplomatically, and Portugal cut off relations with India entirely until their authoritarian government, the Estado Novo government, was overthrown in 1974 with the Carnation Revolution. That being said, Portuguese India ended in 1961, 14 years after the British. Now, there is one final colonial nation to talk about, but before we get to them, I'd like to talk about this video sponsor, Ridge Wallet. People who have watched me for a while know I love being sponsored by these guys because I legitimately enjoy their wallets. I've been using them for years at this point, and with the quality of their sleek metal wallets, it's no wonder they've had a loyal customer base for some time. As a matter of fact, Ridge is currently celebrating their ninth year anniversary as a company and having a sale on their website for their products. If you click the link in the description below using the code EMPEROR, you can get 15% off your next order. Or, who knows, maybe you might be tempted to get even more with their anniversary deals. Get a Ridge wallet today, and thank you Ridge for sponsoring this video. Alright, so what's the final colonial power? Did the Dutch or Danish have some colony we forgot about? Well, there are a few plot twists with this one in that the colonial power is not European at all, but rather Middle Eastern the Sultanate of Muscat and Oman. 
Oman has a really old and extensive history, but during the late 1600s, it began a colonial empire across the western Indian Ocean. In fact, Oman controlled a lot of the East African coast and other areas of the Persian Gulf as well. While the Europeans and Iranians drove Oman out of most of their colonial holdings by the 1900s, there was one left over in the Indian subcontinent. I have to preface that with subcontinent because the other twist is that this colony was not in the area of India, but rather Pakistan. The Omani colony was a small town called Gwadar on the Pakistani coast. In a way, it was also sort of British controlled in that Oman itself would become a British protectorate until the 1970s, meaning they had their local rulers and customs, but Britain was in charge of their foreign policy. Some of the various deals between Oman and Britain included allowing Oman to keep control of Gwadar rather than letting it be absorbed into British India. With Pakistan's independence, they naturally wanted Gwadar just as much as India wanted the other European holdings, and after some negotiations, Pakistan agreed to purchase Gwadar from Oman for 5.5 billion rupees in 1958. For comparison, a rough estimate I got from an inflation calculator puts that at the modern equivalent of about 833.7 billion Pakistani rupees, or 4.7 billion US dollars. So, colonial India technically didn't end with the British, and there was even an event of using India's military to drive some of them out. It's not dramatic world-altering history, but I still find stuff like this really fascinating. It shows that even though there is a general truth of colonial India in 1947, just like with many other things, it's technically a little more complicated than that. I'm Emperor Tigerstar, and I'll see you guys next time.